So as the NEET results were announced recently, lakhs of students who qualified the exam will be looking forward to the college they want to go in. A college is a place where you're going to be spending a huge chunk of your young adult lives and it will probably make you or shape you and that is a place that will determine what your future looks like. Right? Maybe. Hi everyone, my name is Anuj. I'm a third year MBBS student at Government Medical College Nagpur and in this video I'll be taking you through what are all the different things you should consider before choosing a medical college and the reason why I did not go for AIMS, rather I went for GNC Nagpur. So without any further ado, let's go. So a little bit of backstory with me, I cleared both NEET and AIMS in 2018 and in NEET I got an all-in-a rank of 885 and in AIMS I got a 99 percentile which was enough to get me admission into most of the AIMS colleges in India as well as most of the government medical colleges in India. So why did I choose GMC Nagpur uh, rather than AIMS? By the end of the video you will understand it by yourself and I hope this video sheds some light upon what are all the things that you should consider before getting into your medical college. So what makes a top college? first point is the academics. It loosely translates to how many classes you're going to have, how many practicals you're going to have, how many discussions and tutorials you're going to have. One of the most important factors that governs how much you're going to be successful in your college life is how much you study. And that is usually determined by what is the competition present in your college. Let's say that there's a college of 200 and out of that 200, 150 are very very studious and studying continuously. So you will be forced to study. So what happens in these top colleges is that whenever there is a narrow selection range, a student who has scored very very nicely in an exam only gets through and that creates a population of very very smart students who are extremely competitive so that makes you work harder and harder every single day and the more you study in a medical college the more research papers you publish the more you learn about facts it's going to be better in your journey in the future because you're going to treat thousands of patients in your coming life and whatever you study over here is somewhere going to be useful in your future and therefore colleges with a narrow selection range such as AIMS, Delhi, KEM or FMC are one of the best colleges in India because only the top of the top make it through and if you are getting one of these colleges make sure that you go into them Second most important fact that you have to consider before getting into a medical college is the inflow of patients or how much patients are coming into the hospital in, uh, associated with that particular college. Now there is a reason for that. In first year it won't matter to you much because most of the times first year very much looks like class 11th or class 12th. You are just going to the college learning theory theory, doing some basic practicals like looking at the microscope or performing some experiments in the biochemistry lab. But when you are in second year you will be given something called as a clinical posting in which you have to go in the morning at 9 or 8 and you have to stay in the hospital till 12 or 1 pm and in there you have to look at all the different cases and these cases are basically just patients and these patients are coming to the hospital with different sorts of diseases so all the diseases that you're going to be reading about in your textbooks are going to be exactly what you're going to be seeing in the patients so the more patient inflow you have the more you know knowledge you will have uh, apart from your books in the posting you learn not from the book you learn from the patients and the more patients you have the more learning ability you will have in a particular college and the patient info roughly corresponds to how many number of beds a particular college has so there are a lot of articles on the internet three colleges that i'm going to consider over here is aims delhi kem mumbai and the next one is gmc nagpur my college so you can see aims has 2362 beds kem has 2250 gmc has 1886 this might have changed because of the recent pandemic but this is the rough numbers and you can see these are very very high and you can imagine a lot of different people will be admitted to the hospital in these beds so if you want to check out which hospital is great you can just look at the bed matrix which will give you a rough idea of how well that hospital is doing one direct example I can give you is that when I was posted in general medicine on my very first day I saw a case of SLE and I saw another case of Gotcha's disease, two of the diseases which are considered to be rare when you read the textbooks. And I saw these in my very first day in the posting. So you can imagine the more patients you have, the more chances you have to see the cases which are rare in your textbooks and that will help you a lot. So the basic patient flow is outlined by this flowchart over here. Maximum patients are going to be coming in central government hospitals such as AIMS. Next we have state government colleges like KM Mumbai or GMC Nagpur. Next we have the private colleges which are present in cities. Next, we have state colleges which are present in periphery. So in Maharashtra, that would be considered something as GMC Gondia, which is present kind of in the periphery. So the patient flow does decrease by a lot. Next, we have the deemed colleges in the city. And lastly, we have the deemed colleges in the periphery. And of course, the least patient inflow is seen when you're going outside India in the foreign colleges, where essentially they don't have a thing called as clinical posting. So make sure that you look at this very important matrix before selecting which college you want to go into. 
Another thing to consider, especially in India, is that if you are belonging to a different state, for example, in North India, let's say you're a guy from Himachal Pradesh, right? And if you are going to a college in Kerala, then you're going to have a bit of a problem with the language. So there's this language barrier specifically present in the Indian colleges because of the way the geography and the diversity of the population is there. But of course, this is all reversible because you can learn new languages and you can decrease that barrier by yourself. But make sure to keep this in mind if you're selecting a college outside your state. In fact, the colleges who are in China who have a few months of training uh, to learn the Chinese language before they are actually allowed to get into the medical college. Talking about the NEET examination, it is not easy to crack even for the best of us. But some apps make it easy and productive. Allow me to introduce this app called as Flash Prep for you. It's an exam productive app that helps NEET aspirants among other aspirants to study, revise and test. You can study from the countless flashcards made from all the topics of NEET right from physics, chem and biology and even make some for yourselves. Now these flashcards contain important topics that you have to memorize, right from formulas, equations to important names in biology. You can ensure Flash Prep to ensure you to study every single day with his daily practice problems and practice questions. And best of all, if you lose the interest of studying, you can always look at your activity log which records what is the amount of time you've been spending, how much flashcards you've done and all the analytics for you. Now, I don't usually recommend such apps for need aspirants, but this one I had to because it is just so awesome and so beautifully designed that I urge you guys to try it out. The best part about this is it is absolutely 100% free. That's right, 100% free. So I request all the future medicos in this channel to download this app and check out all the beautiful flashcards for yourselves. And the next time you're opening up your phone to open up Instagram, Instagram, instead use flash prep to increase your preparation level with NCRD based flashcards. Again, it's completely free, so make sure that you download it and try it out yourself. The next important thing to consider before going in is the campus. So there are three basic things in campus that you should consider. The first of them is the college building, second is the hospital building and third one is the hostels and everything associated with like the mess and the basketball court and everything related to sports. So for me personally, campus is a very important part because that is the place where you're going to be spending most of your time as students and you're going to have all the fun activities inside your campus. So every single function, every single GT, every single party, everything is going to be present inside the campus. So a bigger campus definitely means that you're going to have a lot more space to work with. And it also feels very much free rather than being congested. Here's the data from GMC Nagpur. It is built upon 186 acres of land. So that is pretty much a very, very big area. And that's why I love my college a lot. I might be a little bit biased, but it's okay. So let us talk about the college buildings. So the college building is going to have all your basic theory classes, your practical classes up to second year of MBBS. From third year and fourth year onwards, you're going to be going outside the college building, inside the hospital for every single thing. You won't have classes in a college building. So what you have to do over here is that just ask a senior these very important four questions. First of all, ask them what is the situation of the dissection table in the first year MBBS. So dissection table is a table over which the dead body is there and you have to dissect it in first year anatomy and learn about everything that body has to offer and learn anatomy from it. So you have to ask your senior how many people are present in one dissection table because the more number of people are there, the more crowded it's going to get and it's going to be difficult for you to actually get your hands on work while dissecting the body. In our college at my time it was 16 people per DT. Now it has gone up by like four or five because the number of seats in my college were increased. But of course this completely depends upon how many new bodies are going to be coming in the college because those are the bodies which you use in dissection. But it's a good estimate of how good a college is. Next is you have to ask them what about the physiology and biochemistry practicals? Does anybody attend them? And if people are not attending them that means the departments are not really strict about the practicals and that means that you probably should avoid this college because over there academics is not really that good. Next is you can ask them about the microscope condition while studying histology or histopathology and you can ask them is every student allotted a single microscope or does four or five students share a single microscope. So what I'm trying to basically tell is that in first year you're going to have this subject called as histology and in histology you have to look at the different slides and in my colleges we are given our own personal microscope which you have to use throughout the year and look at different tissues and the same case goes for histopathology or microbiology. So you have to ask this important matrix uh, whether or not there is a microscope present because that is also another indicator. Next you have to ask them is the attendance really serious or not because that is a very important factor. Lastly, if possible, you can go ahead, go into the college with a senior and look at the different lecture and practical halls if you really want to be sure about the college. Next thing you should consider is a hospital building and the hospital building doesn't really matter a lot if you have a good patient inflow and if you don't know what the patient inflow is, you can go ahead, Google search it and you'll get the answers. The next thing is the hostels and before going to the hostel, please make sure to ask the senior or ask somebody you know inside the college these four important questions. First is the ragging situation, whether or not ragging is present in the hostel or not. Second, how is the situation of the washroom and the living 
space for a personal room. Third is the area for the parking of vehicle. Fourth is the distance of your hostel from your college because that is going to be something you travel a lot. And the last one, the fifth question, is the distance from the shop or the mess because that is again you're going to travel a lot over there. Speaking of mess, most of the colleges don't have the best mess, right? But thankfully we have Swiggy and Zomato which you can occasionally use to order food online. Next important thing in the campus is the library and the sports area. So library is something which you're going to be spending a lot of your time in if you are especially living in the hostel because that is the only place that you study in hostel. Mostly people are chilling out relaxing, right? So in the library what you have to do is just look at if there are sufficient books for you to study and what is the capacity of the library? Will you be allowed to enter the library, etc. All of these questions are really important. And the next thing is for the sports and things you can ask the students who are into sports. Right, the next thing is kind of controversial issue. This is the age of the institute. So what is happening is that a lot of new medical colleges are being opened up. So people are confused whether should I go for a really old college, which is very, very reputed, or should I go for a newly constructed Ames College in my area? So the usual concept is that the older the institute gets, the better it becomes because it ha it gains more and more experience. It gains more and more doctors each single year. And the newer the institute is, if you are the initiating batch, there is no seniors in the anterior end. So what will happen is that you will have no sorts of guidance. You will be the pioneers and uh, you will have to face all the difficulties yourself. However, there is a lot of variation in this and a generalized statement can't be put forward. So the best option would be to talking to a person who is in the college, both in the new one and the old one. Sometimes the old ones are better, sometimes they're not. The next most important thing to consider before going to college is the cost of the college. Of course, this is one of the most important factors if you are belonging to a middle class family, which most Indians are. So there are two types of costs that you're going to be facing in medical college. The first one is the fixed cost, which basically translates to your tuition fees as well as your college, as well as your hostel fees, which you can't really skip upon. And that is something you have to pay. So for AIMS, uh, for any AIMS in general, the total fees is 5,000 rupees for five years of MBBS. So this is something which is very, very cheap compared to something like private medical colleges which go as far as 1.5 crore for uh, five years in MBBS. So that is the variation in India and uh, this is very saddening to see that the colleges are charging so much but we can't really do anything about it. In general I would definitely recommend a government medical college for you because that provides you the maximum amount of patients and the maximum amount of uh, experience Plus, it also is very, very reasonable compared to all these other medical colleges. The next type of cost is the flexible cost. So the flexible cost is the amount of money that you spend upon yourself. So be it your shopping, going out, traveling, living, ordering food, all of this comes under your personal costs and you can definitely decrease this by a lot. If you're a localite in a government medical college, by my experience, I can tell you, you won't need more than 5,000 or 5,500 per month to live your entire life. All right, so you can pretty much chill out on that much. The sixth point is the distance from home. So whatever college you're going to be choosing is going to be far from your home, right? So this is much more significant if you are a hostelite and if you have chosen the college in a different city, right? And you really have to consider this fact because this becomes really important if you're really close with your parents and if you're really close with the people that you love and your hometown. Because at some point you're going to get homesick. But don't worry that homesickness goes away really fast because you find yourself a new family in your friends. But if you're really far from the college, it might adversely affect your mental health. And that is something which I'm going to talk extensively in the last segment of this video. So the last segment of this video is mental health and it talks about the optimum performance and this is exactly the reason why I chose GMC Nagpur instead of AIMS. So what happened was that I was faced with this very difficult choice whether should I take KM Mumbai, should I go for GMC Nagpur, should I go for AIMS, right? And uh, there was also this AIMS Nagpur which was recently opened in my city. So a lot of confusion. So I sat down and thought about it. First of all, I looked at the differences between the colleges that is KM Mumbai and GMC Nagpur and to my surprise for the UG level, it doesn't really matter a lot. For example, if you're going to KEM, you're going to have the same timetable as somebody who is going to be in GMC Nagpur. You're going to have the same university and you're going to have the same papers. You're going to have the same syllabus and literally everything else is going to be the same. The only thing that is different is the batchmates in KEM are going to be much, much more smarter because they are very, very filtered and they are the top people in Maharashtra, mostly in Maharashtra. So the competition over there is a lot compared to what we have in GMC Nagpur. The second thing which came to my mind was the living condition. If I went to KEM, I would have to live in a hostel, which has a lot of its benefits as well as some of its cons. But if I stay here in GMC Nagpur, which is almost the same as KEM in terms of college life, if you ask me, then I would get to stay in my home. And being at my home, I would be at the most optimum level of my performance because I wouldn't really have to worry about the food, the travel, um, the homesickness, the batchmates, all the things happen when you go outside your home, right? I wouldn't have to worry about that. 
so since both these colleges were similar to me right i chose gmc nagpur and uh, next came the competition between gmc nagpur and aims nagpur right so i was confused what should i do so at that time i thought that if i take this college i'm going to be the pioneer batch right and i will have no seniors no guidance etc so that's the reason why i took gmc nagpur instead of aims nagpur i was also getting aims bhumneshwar but i avoided that so now this all what i'm talking about in a way talks about your mental health right and the reason is if you are at home you are mentally healthy right in contrast to if you go out because there are a lot of factors which can influence you when you're going out there is a lot of student groups who are into smoking or alcohol that can deteriorate your performance right uh, there are a lot of students who will bully you uh, in the outside city you might feel very very strange and personally i don't really like mumbai so all of these factors you know would definitely have affected my performance a few of my friends got a better rank than me in neat and they took km and what happened was that in the end uh, i scored higher percentage in both first year and second year in mhs compared to them so in the end what it reflects is your mental health if i was in college away from my home i would have to think about a lot of different stuff and that would have changed the course of my life i wouldn't have been able to start this youtube channel or my app or literally do anything because i would be so busy just working up my way to the competition and that is not the case here in nagpur so in the end i only want to tell you that good in a college in which you will be in your optimum performance so my final verdict over here is that if you're getting top medical colleges choose the one in which you will be most optimum right if you're getting a government medical college go only for that don't go for a private medical college if you're getting a new one versus an old one go and talk to the different faculties and different students over there and ask them is it worth it to be over here and lastly you have to find out whether or not does it really matter to you because some things which might matter to me will not matter to you so that was the end of the video and if you'd like to get to know more about gmc nagpur and my life as a college student definitely subscribe to the channel because i make a ton of vlogs which record all the different activities that i do in my college and of course i make videos such as this one which help you out in your medical journey so if you're a medical student or aspiring to be one 100% recommend clicking the subscribe button as always thanks a lot for watching stay safe stay healthy and stay happy i'll catch you in the next one bye